Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Why do we always think of the most crushing comebacks after the fact? We should all have pause buttons that give a minute or so to think of a really good one. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. If you give me your keys, I'm going to toss them in the gutter. This happened about 16 or 17 years ago when I was in my late 20s. Now, one thing I know about myself is that I'm a baby face. Even now at 44, I'm tall and have an athletic build, so I get mistaken for a young 20-something all the time. So you can imagine what I look like at the age of 27 or 28. Now couple that with the fact that I'm a black man, relevant later, and you can just imagine what my life has been like. <laughs> So my team was having a retirement celebration for our manager, and we had a dinner party at a restaurant near our workplace after hours. The shindig ended up being about 25 to 30 people, mostly older. I think I was one of the two or three people there under 40, and it was nice. Our manager shed a tear or two, gave a nice speech, blah, 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 etc. The restaurant was open for business, and there were other small parties, couples, etc. there, and they ignored us, and we ignored them. But we weren't segregated. We were seated toward the center of the seating area around a large table and a second smaller one. So fast forward to the end of the dinner and we're all outside now saying our final greetings and on the verge of dispersing and I was among the group. So a few people start to make their way home and our group is now whittled down to about 10 to 12 people. Other patrons and pedestrians are coming and going like normal and there we are just chatting amongst ourselves. Notably, our manager was still there with this plaque, a relatively large picture frame, and a couple of gift bags, so again, it should have been evident to anybody who was in the restaurant for the last hour who we were. You would think. And then it happens. I'll call her Karen. Karen. Excuse me. Me. Yes, ma'am? Karen. Here are my keys. Me. For... Karen. For you to get my car. Me. I'm sorry, I don't work here, ma'am. Karen, I don't have time for games. Here are my keys. As she's saying this, she tries to stuff her keys in my hand. No, I'm pissed. Me, if you put your keys in my hand, I'm going to throw them across the street and into the gutter. Karen, then why do you have a badge on? As she's saying this, she reaches out to grab my badge like WTF, which was on a lanyard hanging around my neck down around my midsection. But before she can, I snatch it away. Me, if you touch me again, I'll consider it assault and call the police. I don't work here. She withdraws her hand and I release my badge, which she proceeds to study for the two or so seconds it would take to figure out it's not a restaurant or a valet badge. I believe the restaurant contracts out their valet service and having done valet work during college, I'm fairly certain my business attire does not in any way resemble the uniforms. Think tacky vest with logo and matching pants of the two or three companies that are in my area. And furthermore, none of them do badges on lanyards. Then she looks me up and down, comes back to lock eyes with me, and while starting to turn away, utters that word, you know which one, under her breath. Not gonna lie, it caught me off guard, and in the 15 years since, I've thought of the perfect comeback more times than I care to admit, the other story of my life. <sighs> but on the bright side, I'm prepared now. But in that moment, I simply couldn't force words to come out of my mouth, so I just turned around and tried to shake off my shock and anger and proceed as if everything was fine. Most of my remaining coworker group was aware of what had just transpired and there was nothing to be said or done really, so we just kind of started small talking again. And our second story. Keep me after closing? Enjoy your plastic. Back in the day, I worked for the Walmart Deli. We closed at 9. One of the closing duties was wiping down our two big slicers, one for meat, one for cheese. They were such a pain to clean. The meat slicer, which is particularly important to this story, would spray meat bits all over itself. It was not always possible to clean it throughout the day, so the bits would harden and hide in awkward places. It was just an unpleasant job and took anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes for me to clean satisfactorily. So it's after 9, and I've done a pretty good job cleaning the meat slicer. It's very nearly done. In fact, all of a sudden, a client pops up at the window asking for lunch meat. Sorry, sir, we're closed. It's 9 p.m. 
It's not that long ago. Could you make an exception? No, sir, I'm sorry. Subtext, I'm tired as F, man. I'm going home. He leaves, and I figure the exchange is done. It didn't even seem that negative on the whole. Five minutes later, as I'm removing the blade to wash it, the manager on duty shows up with that mother-effing customer tagging along at his heels. There's the biggest crap-eating grin on the customer's face. His eyes are sparkling. His cheeks are two plump little balls of fat. Damn, he's so proud of himself. He went and got daddy all by his lonesome. Cut him some meat, said my manager. But it's after closing, I said. Cut it, said the manager, and walked off. It's Walmart. You get used to being crapped on by both customers and co-workers, so I bite my tongue, swallow my loathing, and put the blade back on the machine. The customer still has this effing look on his face like, ha ha ha, peon. He immediately points out the cheap butt turkey lunch meat, the kind that's basically a whole bunch of turkey bits compressed into the vague shape and color of turkey breast. It's gross and fatty and a little translucent. If you touch it too insistently, it falls apart. Of course, this a-hole would order three pounds of it. I'm not a mean person by nature, nor am I particularly vindictive. I'm not a mean person by nature, nor am I particularly vindictive. I don't look for ways to hurt people is what I'm saying. But as I started slicing this crappy cheap meat on this formerly clean slicer, smearing fatty turkey lard all over, spraying sticky, slimy, reject turkey flesh into every nook and cranny, knowing how very hard this particular brand would be to clean up, Watching this effing annoying man rock back and forth on his heels with this delighted smile. Delighted that he was going to keep me an extra 20 or 30 minutes past my clock out time in my cozy bed. Two can play at this petty a-hole game. If you know anything about slice to order lunch meat, we keep the plastic on as much of the meat as possible to keep it as fresh as possible. You peel it back when the blade gets too close. Well, I just didn't peel it back. The customer was staring straight at me. I don't know if he were even thinking about what I was doing. Maybe he was doing a victory lap in his tiny skull. In any case, the last two pounds of that translucent turkey was interspersed liberally with strips of translucent plastic. Heart hammering. I print off the label, smack it on that bag, give it to him, grunt at him, and then think, I gotta get out of here fast. I've never cleaned as fast as I cleaned that night. I didn't even particularly care if I did it well this time. As I left the store, I peeked over my shoulder and saw my manager hightailing it to the deli section. I sprinted off. The next day, we received my bag of plastic turkey from Returns, all three pounds of it. The reason? There's plastic in it. Manager never did talk to me, and I went on as usual. I win, B-word. Knowing how much Walmart managers hate overtime, I would have said, this will make me go into OT, and if they still made me slice the meat... I would have taken extra cleaning time afterwards. And our last story. Mechanic took my boat for a joy ride, crashed it into a 40-foot yacht, and totaled it. So I have had a small 17-and-a-half-foot ski boat. About a month ago, I took my boat into a local mechanic as it needed a new starter. The mechanic is a small local shop, just owner and I think like two employees. After about a week in the shop, I get a call from the mechanic that he had crashed the boat because there was an issue with the lights and during the seal train just to make sure everything works. Over the past month, I've been getting more info slowly from my insurance company and the Texas game warder who does the investigation on this. Basically, what I know happened, and to clarify, I never signed anything from the shop that says they were allowed to take my boat out. The owner of the shop took the boat out around 6.30 p.m. on a Friday, the night of September 11th. On my boat was an employee of his and his cousin. They apparently took it around for a while and then stopped at a local pub for pizza. Then they went to the neighbor wine bar where they had one glass of wine each. They left the bars and then went out onto the water. At this point, they apparently had trouble operating the lights on the boat. They then proceeded to hit a 40-foot yacht at about 18 miles per hour head on. The employee was ejected from the boat. The owner then jumped into the water after him to help the employee. They got the employee to shore and had to rush him to the hospital. He suffered major injuries, two broken ribs and a collapsed lung. The cousin of the owner was able to get the boat as it was taking on water to a lift. The lift was owned by a local lady who had heard the incident and helped them get the boat out of the water. Apparently, the yacht originally just sped off but came back yelling at everyone and got insurance info. 
I don't have info of anyone on the yacht yet, but I hear there was about 10 people and that they were taking cell phone pics at this time. The boat mechanic business might not have insurance, but this was not work related. So my insurance would sue the individuals involved if they own a home and have homeowners insurance. I believe that would come into play. I do, however, have extensive experience operating speedboats at night. The claim that there was an issue with the lights is an attempt to pass partial liability to me. This is BS. At night, at 18 miles an hour, spotlights or headlights should not be used to spot obstacles as large as a 40-foot boat. Use of spotlights reduces the driver's visibility to the small circle of the light, and 18 miles per hour is too fast for that approach. An alert operator can spot a 40-foot yacht without a spotlight. Also, if the yacht had its running lights on, then it would be one of the easiest things to see in the dark, if you're alert and sober. Update. I gave my insurance company all the information I had. They said they could sue him for the full value of the boat, but I have little chance of getting it from him myself. My insurance also provides all the necessary legal coverage and paper trail to prove that I am not responsible for the damage to the yacht, and they'll go after him for any damages they're charged for. When they said that they're done investigating, I took the 12K. Also, the local authorities became interested in the actions of the mechanic after this incident. He had to close his business. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.